Hey, episode three of making my own RPG, Arcane Ugly. Today I'm making wands, both in a physical form and literary form for my rule book. Ever since reading Harry Potter as a kid, I've always wanted a wand. I think they're cool in like a really um, uncool sort of way. And I want them to be a desirable weapon, I guess you'd say, of choice in my RPG as well. I figured actually making a wand would be a really fun way to work through ideas. And um, well I mean, not just that, uh, it's totally just me wanting to scratch my itch of making one to swish around the house and maybe on the tabletop. So in my world of Arcane Ugly, where spells are cast through spellbooks and magical artifacts and you don't need a wand, why would you want one? I think the obvious thought, or like the typical fantasy idea, is that wands are used to channel magic, or at least point it in the right direction. In game rules, this could be simply explained with like a plus one modifier to your casting roll attempts. Yeah, all very boring. So I had another idea, what if wands were like a safety net, a barrier between you and the spell, in case it all went horribly wrong. In game, this could work a few ways. You could sacrifice your wand to prevent a miscast, or you could re-roll your result on the chaos and calamity table, so instead of exploding into pieces, you can just re-roll, and maybe this time you'll just lose a toe or grow a tentacle or something. Or, this takes a little bit more work on my part, you could make the chaos and calamity table progressively worse uh, the higher you roll. So your wand instead might reduce that roll by say 10 for example. So no matter what your roll is, it's never as bad as how it could have been if you weren't rolling with a wand. I like all the ideas so far, but they're all um, sort of logical or sensible. It doesn't really feel like weird magic enough. So I thought, well, what can we make that's so wild that when a player finds a weird twisted wand with an eye growing out the side, they're like, oh my God, what does it do? Uh, well, the other day I went for a run to try to get fit. And on the brink of death, I looked up at the clouds above with my uh, sweaty, blurred vision, and I had an idea. Uh, what if there was a way to modify spells, or combine multiple together? I'm thinking mostly of that game Magicka, where you combine different basic spells and then they become new spells. And it's sort of really fun because there's like a dumb logic to it, so you feel smart and sciencey, and you want to try every combination, and in the process you probably kill all your friends. Well I love that idea, but it does introduce some problems into Arcane Ugly. First of all, spellcasting is very risky, because there's always a chance of it going horribly wrong. So casting two spells in theory should be even riskier, because of the instability of the two spells interacting with each other. Logically, you might just say, well that's the way things are, make that the rules, so if you want to do the crazy thing, you're just going to have to accept the risk that it's two or three times more likely that you're going to blow yourself up. But I don't think that's fun, because you've just introduced players to an exciting mechanic, and then you put it behind a glass case that says do not break unless of an emergency or something. I think, personally, mechanics exist to be used, they're all tools in your tool belt. But that being said, on the other side of things, too much magic being the answer to everything makes things less fun, or uh, the crafty problem solving becomes less rewarding. So, how do we moderate this mechanic to get people using it, but also not turn them into like demigods? Well, I think that brings us back to wands. At first, I thought maybe you could transfer a spell into a wand through some sort of like ritual or enchanting process. And then when you cast a spell through the wand, both the spell cast and the spell inside the wand combine into a new explosive result. Then to balance things, the spell inside the wand probably vanishes once it's cast, so then it becomes like a one-time use thing. Then as like a mechanic, you have to think about what sort of spell you want in your wand and you have to prepare it and then uh, choose which ones to carry on your adventure, that sort of thing. So one issue is that that concept is sort of confusing. The other issue is it involves preparation. I think at this stage, Arcane Ugly is like a very now game. Get the adventurers to the dungeon 
now. Don't think about preparing your spells or collecting ingredients. You don't need to. Just go adventure now. So I think in order to uh, stop that sort of slowness, we need to take the idea and simplify it. I'm thinking this. Ones in Arcane Ugly either modify your rolls or they modify your spells. This is what I'm thinking. You might find a wand of fire, which will then add the fire property to any spell cast through the wand. Casting a water spell through the wand of fire might make a jet of steam. Casting a toxic gas through the wand of fire might make a flamethrower. Now, a real example of what this might look like is an adventurer is confronted with a monster, but it's okay. They have a copy of the spell book Knots and Whatnot by Null Tooth Nelly, and they whip out their wand of thorns and they cast a rope binding spell. Now, Without the wand, it would just be a regular old rope. But now the rope is covered in barbs for some extra damage if the monster caught tries to escape. I think where this idea or concept sort of falls through is what happens when the result of the spell and wand modifiers are less clear. For example, a more abstract spell like sentience, which gives an inanimate object, well, sentience, what happens if that's cast? through the Wand of Thorns. Does the sentient object now have a sharp tongue? Is it a bit of a prick? I don't know, but that's probably a lot of pressure for a games master to come up with on the fly. So maybe the solution is adventurers should have some sort of intention in mind. Um, and then it's sort of up to the GM and player to come up with a compromise. Or maybe there's just like an escape answer that might be like, well, some additional effects aren't obvious at the point of casting. I don't really know, but I'll think about it. Um, but I'm thinking maybe let's just like outsource some ideas. I've put this idea out to you. Come back with some suggestions for me because um, I want to make this work. So hit me up in the comments. And until then, thank you for watching. Um, development happens on my Patreon when it's not here on YouTube and eventually there'll be an actual release. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for the support. It's all been really, really wild and allowing me to make all this stuff has been really, really fun. So thank you. Okay, talk to you in a bit. Bye, leave a comment, bye. Ha <laughs> ha.